Hi and welcome to Intergeo TV. My name is Denise Wenzel and I would like to welcome you to today's Tech Talk with Bo Legier, a Director of Imagery and Remote Sensing at ESRI and Peter Becker, Group Product Manager for Imagery at ESRI. Welcome Bo and Peter. So hi, where are you joining us? From where? So I'm, I'm actually in, uh, in Redlands, uh, which is the uh, headquarters for um, ESRI. So I'm, I'm, I'm in California. Okay, Bo? And I, and I am in the Denver, Colorado regional office for ESRI. Great, so thanks for being our guests here at this Intergeo Tech Talk. And today you have the opportunity to present your solutions or innovations or just what you want to share with us, with the Intergeo visitors. So, and uh, first of all, to our audience, I want to introduce our guests. So, Bo Leger is, di Leger is Director of Imagery and Remote Sensing at ESRI, and his team works closely with partners and customers on their imagery data and analytics needs. And he has over 25 years of experience working with commercial and government customers to solve problems using remotely sensed data and analytics. He specializes in advanced data sources, sources such as hyperspectral data, SAR and LiDAR. Bo enjoys working closely with customers to create solutions that bring together data sources, software and anal analysis to deliver insights from imagery that drive business value. And uh, with us is also Peter Becker. He is Group Product Manager for Imagery at ESRI. He joined ESRI in 2005 and has over 30 years of experience in the geospatial and remote sensing industry. He has focused on ESRI's imagery technology and scaling these capabilities in the cloud, but also has extensive knowledge and experience in the many facets of applying imagery to mapping and GIS. So Please explain so why image data and especially remote sensing data find their way into the GI systems, GIS systems at all, and for which applications does it make sense? And uh, I don't know who wants to start, Bo or Peter. I'll go. For, I'll go first. Let me let me take that first. So, uh, so a couple of things on that. I mean, first, you know, a lot of people consider you know GIS really sort of the analysis of vector data, and it really isn't. It's really the the analysis of all forms of geospatial data, both in place and time. Uh, similar, you know, remote sensing really it takes lots of aspects. It's not only the optical imagery, but it's lidar and radar, and all all forms of data which is sensed and really it still is the primary source of nearly all spatial data so you know in the in the past we've really seen or we we see you know G people have seen gis and remote sensing as being really two different disciplines which are typically used you know different tools in different environments um, and they really did not benefit from each other uh, you know the gis people would typically only see imagery as a background and the remote sensing uh, users would really only see imagery with really very little context about the the spatial extents and the influence of other layers that might have in what in the analysis they're doing and it's still amazing me that i still sometimes see you know users doing remote sensing you know as a single data source without actually using the other layers to provide that context and explanation so in really ArcGIS, we've really removed this distinction across the board. Uh, you know, our primary um, desktop application, which is ArcGIS Pro, uh, is really you know, designed for GIS professionals. But by that, we mean across the board, both people doing vector data, but also a lot of, uh, uh, of um, imagery data. And we've really added extensive capabilities for processing and advanced analysis of all forms of imagery. So, I mean, the, you know, the, 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 the interfaces tools work both with the vector and the imagery in a single environment and provide really a unified ex experience. And similar on the servers, and the servers perform the processing of both types of data. They handle the massive volumes of both vector and raster data simultaneously. And you know a lot of the more advanced uh, Im image analysis actually involves the use of a lot of vector data, such as the location of plot boundaries or roads or streams and things like that. So you know, the integration of this, 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 this data is critical for different analysis. And we're also seeing you know, a lot of the outputs of uh, image analysis actually being vectors. If we take, you know, the um, um, AI and deep learning um, as an example, where, you know, massive volumes of imagery are now being processed and analyzed within ArcGIS, 
the majority of the output of that is actually vectors that also then need to be further analyzed to really extract that useful information. Uh, so we really get, you know, the, the value of GIS is really of, of performing the processing and analysis on both the remote sensing and the vector data combined. So I'd mentioned sort of the higher end professional desktop analysis applications, um, but this also goes, you know, to um, the same thing, as I said, on the servers. But if we look into how these applications are becoming available, to most people they are becoming available in web applications or in field applications. And that's also an area where we see that while in the past people have really looked at a web application and seen just sort of imagery as a background context, what we're seeing much more now is that users really want to understand what's going on behind the data. So the ability to integrate that imagery and remote sensing data sources into those web applications is really allowing a much more dynamic applications for users to go literally anywhere in the world, look and really understand the interactions that are happening between these different sources. And that's really where the technology that we have is very powerful in being able to not only display sort of static data, but also really work it's dynamic environments enabling the users to interact with processing literally in real time with the processing performed on potentially massive amounts of compute in the background. So really it's the, it's the, it's the fact that the integration of the, the remote sensing data and the GIS data into a complete platform is really opening up a lot of new capabilities that were previously sort of siloed into different, into different areas. I hope that helps a little bit. It helps a little bit. Do you have something to add, Bo, at the moment about these applications? Um, no, I don't know. Not at the moment. Okay. But I will later. Okay, so let's go a little bit deeper because the issues of sustainability and climate change um, affect all of us. And what can data from remote sensing do for the for the climate protection and the sustainability? Um, just explain this to us and give some examples. Okay, I'll, I'll take this one as well uh, for the time being. So, um, yeah, I mean, Esri is really dedicated to understanding the environment. I mean, we really work incessantly uh, to, you know, essentially measure and model the world and allow us to really understand what's what's taking place. And geospatial technology is really critical to understanding the world. I mean, it's really only through understanding what we have can we hope to really um, under, um, hope to change what we're doing in the future and, and see, see where we're going. So I, I mentioned before, you know, we, we, we provide the tools to take the billions of uh, measurements, you know, manage those measurements, um, share them, uh, refine them to create products to help understanding you know, perform the analysis on them, and then enable those results to be visualized and shared, shared to others for them to understand. So this includes the sort of processing of petabytes of imagery and remote sensing data uh, that can then be interactively analyzed and used, used for different analysis. So you know, the tools that we provide you know, work on the, so the management of the data, the dissemination of the data, the processing of the data, the analysis of the data, and the visualization and exploitation of the data. And when we look at you know, sustainability and the issues of climate change, it's important to really understand time. You know, time has really become the critical dimension. Uh, and much of the work that we've been doing over the years is really to help work with time. We've added a lot of tools, for example, for working with multidimensional data. This has been able to take the huge amounts of scientific data that's being created and enable us to visualize and analyze it to really understand the trends that are going on within with, 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 in, in the Earth. Um, so this this is taking not only you know scientific scientific data sets and looking at the trends in those, but also taking remote sensing data and what sometimes people uh, um, refer to as analytical ready data, which are really stacks of data sets such as Landsat and Sentinel, and being able to look through those and analyze those for different uh, for, for, for for these trends. So we really need to um, you know to enable sustainability. We really need to understand where we are in. Uh, where we are now, but more importantly, or just as importantly, we need to understand where we were. So this aspect of being able to take all this, the data that we've been collected over the last 40 or literally 100 years, being able to look at that, 
identify the trend where we were, identify where we are, and therefore we can predict better for where we are in the future. So these are really the, the tools that we are, we are working on to, to analyze these data, understand the data sets, and it's not really about Esri doing, doing all the work, it's really about providing those tools that really allow the world, so many people, literally millions of people in the world who use our Esri technology, to take those tools, work with them to help us understand these problems, and then um, share those with a wider community to, to, uh, um, to, to, un to understand where we are and where we're, where we're going. So really, it's really the combination of all those, including also providing access to that data sources to enable that analysis to be performed. So that's how, sort of how we play in that, whole, in that whole sphere. Thank you very much for that overview. This is really interesting. And um, let's go to the other topic, trend topic of our time, which is smart cities. And it's all about the creating of digital images, digital twins of the cities to understand them better and to guide processes and citizens, citizens in them to put urban planning just in a better understandable environment for everybody to participate or to create. So um, what can that remote sensing or those images achieve in this environment? How can they help with the urban planning or just the participation or just give us those examples, please, or go into that topic deeper with us? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna take this one. Uh, so yeah, smart cities is definitely a trending topic and, and really to understand smart cities, you, you have to understand you know, what, it, what is driving this movement and, and it's really being driven by the digital transformation of, of city and, and regional planning. And that is that starts with the actual planning and doing that in a digital way, doing that in three dimensions and and building models of what your city should be or is or would like to be or some additions that could happen there. And, and in that case, you know, we 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 embrace uh, technologies that that allow for this type of urban planning and also 3D modeling. We have products uh, such as our city engine product and our RGS urban product that do that. They embrace the planning aspect of of the digital transformation that these cities desire to get to this this end goal of smart cities. Now, once you have done that planning, that's when that's when the remote sensing and imagery can come in to to get a visualization to derive information from the city as it is built and as it exists. And this is where you bring in, you know, aerial collections. Sometimes uh, the, those aerial collections are, are flown by drones. Some are flown by, you know, uh, by aircraft with very capable um, high altitude cameras. And those 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 remote sensing data sources can be used to create uh, realistic three dimensional models uh, that um, are. It, the form that we're talking about are 3D meshes. Once it can be put onto a web app or a map or into a planning solution, and you can actually see the as-built city. Uh, these are these are uh, models that we build either on the very local scale at a, at a site level from drones, from our site scan and drone to map products, or on a city scale from our shore product line. And these these data are highly accurate they are visibly accurate and a lot of the times they create or they contain the attribution that feeds directly into the gis planning function so this feels natural for an urban planner who's used to using a, a, a gis to do this but sometimes only in two dimensions now the nice thing about remotely sensed data sources is they come in, in various forms and, and there are other forms of imagery that are not flown overhead that could be driven on the streets with cameras mounted in cars and taking imagery in, in 360 degrees you know, from all angles, a camera literally going in a circle above a car. And this provides that on the ground detail and we call that oriented imagery and, and that that's that integrates perfectly into a GIS and it adds another dimension to to the smart city, to the digital twin. Instead of just the the highly accurate 3D model of the building, now you have the street view of the building or you have 
the uh, the ground features, the street furniture, things that can be captured from from one of these cars, and we add location to that data, or or we take the location from that data and put it onto a map. And the um, you know another source that we can also bring in is is lidar. Lidar has been around for quite a while. Lidar can be uh, taken from the aircraft. It can be derived from drones, and it provides yet another source uh, that can be either that can be used to model buildings, that can be used to uh, accurately map the ground and the features on the ground. So all of these combined into a you know the the smart city uh, experience. But again, it starts with planning and goes to the capture of, of that environment as built. And it's all enabled by technology that exists today inside of the GIS. Thank you for these examples, how GIS or imagery is used um, to help or to build smart cities. And um, just to uh, summarize and illustrate, um, how can organizations use GIS to address the current challenges like climate change and sustainability? Or just once again, how is GIS used to help to build smart cities? Okay, so, I mean, let's, let's have a look at the, you know, ever increasing so-called natural disasters that seem to be, you know, that are, that are happening in the world and unfortunately increasing all the time, you know, in the last years, we've seen you know terrible floods and fires literally sweep or burn away complete towns. Uh, you know we have to realize that the, the 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 world is changing, and you know these disasters are going to continue more and more as we move forward. And to do that, we really need to prepare ourselves. Uh, and what do we mean by prepare ourselves? Uh, is not just to build things to try and ward off these issues, but really to try and model them because they will keep coming. So, you know, we ne really need to um, plan for what to do in the case of these events. You know, where should people be ev evacuated? What happens after the events? How do, how do people get uh, compensated for, for, for their losses and helped? And this really, to do this, we really is a spatial problem. Uh, we really need to ensure that we have really good models of our environment. We under, need to understand where these assets are. We need to uh, be able to model what happens when these when these when when these effect, effects. So, um, and that really is all about um, you know collecting this GIS on spatial information, managing it effectively sharing it with the appropriate organizations so that we know you know where is the water where are the electricity where are the schools where are the hospitals these are all spatial problems that need to be solved but they need to be solved together it's not about solving individual problems of where a particular asset is the real value comes into bringing these multiple assets together and this is really where sort of the GIS comes into its own. It's the ability to bring the, the data sources from within your, organize, your own organization, but then also to bring information from other organizations. So in other words, to collaborate with organizations within a city. So this information comes together to create this real living model of the, uh, of the environment, uh, which in a way is this digital twin that we can then really use to understand and plan for, uh, and, 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 and plan what's, what could happen and what we should do to better, better prepare ourselves against it. So it's, you know, the key thing is, is the way that the GIS technology now can bring together these different sources and really enable us to understand and better prepare and plan and hopefully also understand what we can do to really change the course and really create sustainable uh, economies uh, that we the, uh, that humanity can continue to grow appropriately um, but still ensure that uh, nature uh, is is taken into account because otherwise it will consume us so um, 
I don't know. Do you want? Do we also want to talk about how exactly does integration of image data and remote sensing data into GIS work exactly? So you have s some concrete solutions you want to explain to us or to the audience to introduce visitors right now. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll take that and I'll I'll talk about some solutions. I mean, the the integration of of imagery data, uh, imagery and remote sensing data in the GIS really starts. Uh, with with a base map in most cases, so a lot of the times you you know the first exposure that a GIS user has to imagery data is a high resolution imagery base map that can be brought into the GIS and is most often provided with the GIS. That provides some context, some location context. What what do things look like at a certain date? A kind of baseline of of knowledge and information. Now that. Now that is often just the beginning, and uh, for most customers, that's not appropriate for what they want to do with their their solution. Often they want to they want to create new information, vector based information, as Peter really dug into in the beginning of this of uh, this talk. They they want to derive new vectors from from data that is current or that is um, richer in its content. And in that case, we bring in other sources. So let's let's say, for an example, you wanted to uh, get a you wanted to get a view of a, an agricultural field. Well, you want to get a view of an agricultural field either now or very recently, and you would want to bring in additional data. And the GIS, um, our GIS, is is built to connect the data sources uh, that are either served on the web or can be uh, can be obtained and served locally. And then the solution involves applying an analytic to that data and deriving vector content. And that is that is the, the simplest manner. That analytic can be very simplistic or it can be very complex. It can use image science technologies or it can use artificial intelligence and machine learning to derive uh, features that uh, are, are trained and uh, can can be high, can be extracted with high accuracy and high reliability. Uh, so these these types of solutions, this is kind of your standard GIS workflow, but you can go deeper and take that two dimensional problem and turn it into three dimensions, and bring in lidar content and bring in the elevation um, aspect of a problem because elevation is critical to a lot of problems such as modeling water flow and other hydrologic, uh, phenomenon, um, or, uh, just looking at a landscape and predicting its impact in a natural disaster. And that's where you really want to bring in content that is not just two dimensions. It goes into the third dimension and, you know, reverting back to, um, to my original or to my earlier, a conversation about smart cities a lot of the times you want a fully immersive 3d environment and that is bringing in more and more imaging and remote sensing content that goes way beyond just the baseline base map so um you know the imagery in gis really just sometimes starts at the simplistic bring an image as a background to your analysis but a lot of times goes much deeper than that and it and it involves deriving additional, more timely, more advanced information from those imagery sources. And the key is getting that imagery data into the system and then applying and then having the right analytics to apply to it. Thank you. So um, mm -hmm. last week we had a talk about the climate change and it was tracking um, climate change with geodata. And uh, Jürgen Schumacher from Esri Germany was here in our talk and he referred to the living atlas of the world. So um, who does this atlas help and what is it exactly? Uh, well, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, it was actually, I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed that uh, presentation earlier. 
So yeah, let's talk a little bit about the Living Atlas. Yeah, uh, Jorgen actually mentioned it, and uh, maybe I can go a little bit more into details of what it is. Uh, really, it is it, it is a, um, a a lot of curated content that has been put together by Esri. Um, so it provides a, access to a lot of authoritative data sources that can be very easily integrated into all forms of applications. So these data sources can you know include um, you know a lot of vector data such as you know country trees and road 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 networks uh, a real-time traffic information uh, vegetation health um, a lot of the data sets are imagery uh, related um, one of the key ones is the world imagery base map and that really is a um, mostly sub meter resolution maintained accurate image of the world that is we keep up to date uh, and that's used extensively I mean that's accessed more than a billion times a day uh, as, a, as, a, as a base map being used in lots of applications there are other data sets in there including for example the Sentinel-2 data uh, that's all the Sentinel-2 data is uh, accessible um, both as um, um, top of atmosphere as, as well as surface reflectance that can, that, uh, that can be used uh, Landsat data uh, it includes for example World Elevation. World Elevation is um, a data set that's been collected from uh, literally hundreds of data sources, organizations around the world contribute their elevation data to ArcGIS Online so that it basically creates this global elevation mo model, which it's not a single data set. It's actually made up of lots of different data sets. And if you go to the world, uh, world elevation, you can go to any particular location and actually see the individual data sets that, that, that may contribute to the, to the, to the final, final results. So, um, you know, this, the, these data sets are not data sets necessarily that Esri collect, um, you know, we don't go and generate those elevation data sets, for example. We collect the data sets from different areas and compile them into these sort of complete data sets, which are properly attributed and documented so that they can actually be, be used. So, yeah, in the, in the imagery side, remote sensing side, I'd mentioned, you know, things like the uh, Sentinel and Landsat, and the data sets like Nate. There are, lo there are a large number of different data sets that, that we, we, we make available. We also make available different applications within the Living Atlas. So the Living Atlas really contains some applications that you can directly use uh, that may 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 uh, um, help solve different problems and they also contain things like story maps um, these help explain uh, um, how trends have taken place uh, if you look at for example covid uh, and the development of covid you can find for example story 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 maps um, about that they also contain models and these are models that can be run within the arcgis uh, pla uh, platform uh, or or RGS system, better said. Uh, so, for example, um, these could be models um, to process remote sensing data. Uh, for example, pre-trained models. Uh, we've recently, in the last year, um, added to the Living Atlas about 20 pre-trained models, uh, which can be applied to uh, perform deep learning against different data sets. So this could be to take let's say imagery data and extract footprints uh, or and take imagery data and extract road networks. Uh, so these are um, models that have been trained, curated from different sources and then made available to anybody to use directly or download from the, from the Living Atlas. Uh, so the data sets that are there can most of them, or a large number of them, can be are basically free for anybody to, to use. Uh, some of the data sets do require that you have a login to um, ArcGIS Online. And there are also data sets there, or premium data sets, which are provided by uh, partners. And uh, you know, we work with a lot of, lot of partners uh, and very often help them provide their content to our customers, or in some cases, um, incorporate that content into uh, the Living Atlas and make that available sometimes through subscriptions. So uh, there's a lot in the Living Atlas. Uh, the best thing to do if you're interested in the Living Atlas, just go and have a look, go and browse to it, just search for it, the, um, the Living Atlas of the World, and have a look at the phenomenal collection of content that can be visualized and then integrated easily together to create different applications. So you'll see there it really f fits in line with ArcGIS Online, which really provides that SaaS environment to enable to, you to create and bring together all these different data sources and create applications to solve real world problems.
thank you very much for joining those yeah, ideas, those preview or insights into the Living Atlas with us. Um, yeah, this Tech Talk is also part of Institute 2021 and maybe you also want to summarize again what you will presenting this year, why we should uh, go and visit Esri's booth at Intergeo 2021 or also browse for the uh, Living Atlas or yeah, just use the stage again um, to summarize again your great products, your imagery works and yeah. Yeah, so um at 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 the conference uh this year you know we're we actually have a hybrid booth uh together with with one of our partners esri germany um and we're going to be really focusing on our imaging and remote sensing technologies uh in five video conference rooms with different different topics and presentations uh we we are going to have uh staff that are doing presentations two per day on our our shore technology and that's that's our our 3D uh, reconstruction technology that really powers the smart city trend and 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 workflows. Um, and uh, on top of that, we're going to have an expo stage presentation by one of our members of our our staff um, over in Germany uh, named Conrad, and he is going to present um, you know his vision for uh, for 3D modeling, smart cities, and um, and, the, and those workflows. So we we are prepared to talk about almost any imaging or remote sensing topic, but we really do have a heavy emphasis on on our 3D uh, capabilities at the conference. And, and we invite everyone to come in and, and just get a demo of that or get, you know, talk to one of our experts in imaging or remote sensing. We'll be, we'll be there um, in a hybrid form. So, this is it for the moment from Peter and Bo from Esri and uh, the remote sensing and GIS live you can also discover at Intergeo in Hanover. And uh, yeah, see you next time to the next Intergeo Tech Talk. And thank you very much. Thank you very much for having us. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Have a good day.